I, when I started talking about the common collapse, I haven't actually indicated the flash point at the moment. So the current flash point is actually the coronavirus or COVID-19. This COVID-19 caused different uh, governments to react quite differently. For example, in Australia here, we are under the lockdown. That means uh, we, are, we are still able to leave our house, but we are not able to assemble with more than two persons unless they are your family members. So I can still take my dog out and have a walk, but not to take my dog out with my neighbor and they walk together. That's against the law at the moment. And there are fines for any uh, people reaching such a uh, strict uh, requirements. And our supermarket for some here also have limited uh, times. So they now open at um, seven o'clock to eight o'clock for special communities, including elderly. And then the normal trading hours also shortened from, I think it's nine to six, instead of the uh, usual seven in the morning until midnight, something like that. So there are a lot of restrictions happening here. And our government has been doing quite a, quite a good job. They are locking us down quite early in the, in the pandemic. So our loss here is around 3,500 at the moment. What about the U.S.? Well, the U.S. started a playing game. Um, the main uh, tactics I think they use is, first of all, denying the existence of the virus, saying that it is fake news from China, while at the same time um, trying to maintain the superficial friendship with President Xi. I say that he is doing a great job, but Again, on the other side, you say all the news coming from China are hoax or chaos or fake news, whatever. Okay? And then uh, also telling the U.S. Uh, citizens that, oh, no, it's just a little bit uh, worse than flu. It's like a flu. It won't cause a lot of damage, da, 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 uh, until probably two weeks ago. Suddenly, um, the U.S. exploded. Uh, at the moment, I think you are sitting at around 300,000, uh, le less than 300,000 uh, infections and almost 4,000 people uh, killed. That's not a good response from the government, isn't it? So we should be asking, what what's wrong is that? Why uh, the US government is not able to react the way the Chinese government have? Well, different people will say, okay, because of um, the government, the US Chinese government is authoritarian. Uh, they don't care about human rights. But look at what actually happened now, for example, in Australia here. All the draconian uh, actions is duplicated here in Australia already. We are not allowed to uh, go out with friends. Uh, all the shops are closed, coffee. Uh, Cafes are closed. Uh, you want to go to a restaurant? Sorry, it's closed, but you can buy take out and then take it back home, etc., etc. So the same thing is almost the same thing. Of course, to a maybe to a slightly different degree, but it's the same thing. That means when there is a pandemic, when there is a uh, virus spreading in the in your community, you don't have a vaccine. You don't have a cure. What can you do? The only thing you can do is block its transmission between people, among people. You stop it by social distancing. Separate people out so that the virus cannot be transmitted among your community. And eventually, when all those who have, who is already infected or is virus carrier overcome the virus by their own immune system, then the virus die, just like what happened in, in China. This is based on science and facts, rather than on e ideology. And that is very important. A government which only works by ideology is not working for its citizens. It should be working according to science and facts 
on ground. Depending what's happening, you change your strategy. What happened now? The first reaction, find a scapegoat, call it China virus, and then blame it to China, which is factually wrong. It is a novel virus. Nobody knows what it is when the, at the beginning. So we need to find, find it, nail it down, search it, confirm that it exists before you tell everybody. Otherwise, you will cause a panic. And before you do that, you also need to have a plan. You know what you are going to do and then tell the public and then do what you should do. That's what happened in China. And they actually published the initial cases back in latest, the last week of January. It is January and now it is April. We have two months in between, February and March. What have our government do? What have our government done? Almost nothing. Almost nothing until it hits on the shore. And then suddenly we find that we don't have enough masks. Our, our healthcare workers doesn't have enough protective equipments and so forth and so forth. Now, the brain game is not only pointing to China. The brain game between in US is also between the federal and the states. Remember your New York a governor asking for help. He asked for 40,000 ventilators. What was the response from Trump? He said, oh, a first class hospital only need one or two. Why you ask for 40,000? <laughs> come on. The figures come out by experts in the field telling how many people is needing the respirators. Okay, no help come, only 400 comes, okay. Then they have to buy it themselves. So the state started buying it, for example, on eBay. But other states also come here and wanted to buy. So they compete against each other. Isn't that ridiculous? Shouldn't US as a whole country combine all the orders into one big one? and then do an international bidding. Then you get the best at the lowest cost. But instead, your states are bidding against each states. That's not the worst part. The federal agency, FEMA, come in and bid as well, pushing up the price, pushing up the price. That is totally unnecessary. Is the manufacturer getting paid more? No. It is the middleman who hold all these critical equipments and then put it on eBay and let you guys beat against each other and hand making its profit. On the other hand, if your government has already organized, it would have stockpile mask, protective equipments, ventilators, and so forth. These are all known to help. There is a Chinese example right there. You care to look, you should know. This is something which helps save lives. And then with all the six, eight, eight weeks in between, you got the time to prepare, to bid for it, to buy it, etc., etc. Even if China, the biggest manufacturing in the world is BC manufacturing for itself. You can start your own companies right back in US to start producing these critical equipments. Once you guarantee the order, these corporations will produce it. But you don't. Your government didn't do that. Instead, what they are doing now? Printing money. They are printing money, give a little bit to everybody, okay? 1,200 to everybody. But the bulk of that printing goes to the corporates, go to the rich people. 
you know how angry you should be when the gov when you are suffering. Over a million people is losing their jobs. Just reported last week. Shouldn't you be supporting these workers? Shouldn't you be supporting all the people who lost their loved ones? But instead, Trump is only only cares about the stock market. He pumps money into the stock market, enriching the already very very rich individuals. Ah, there is trickle down economy. When the rich get rich, they will give us some money. Come on, it never works that way. A corporation will create jobs only, only when there's a market for it. Not because they have money. They have money doesn't create jobs. If there's no market, there's no jobs to be created. Don't listen to this so-called trickle down. To create a market for yourself, let your money circulate within your economy. That's how you create jobs, create demands. When there is demands, there will be somebody taking up, and then creating jobs to meet the demand, pumping money to the businesses, which is already making money, making a huge profit, and sending all the profit to tax-free regions so that they don't have to pay the tax to support your own government. It's not going to help. If it is going to help, you need to pump the money to the people who will spend it right, <clears throat> right away, at your own economy. That means the poor people. You give the poor people the desperate money they need. They will spend it, and when they spend it, they will not spend it on Rolex watches. They will not spend it on. Mercedes Benz cars. They will spend it locally, and generate jobs locally, and your economy started recovering. The downside of this、uh, QE printing, printing money, is not only going to the wrong place; it is sending out the wrong signal to the rest of the world. The whole value. The whole global value will not increase by two trillion because United States print two trillion dollars. The global va values of everything is constant, almost constant. It may be growing, but not because U.S. printed money. It's the same. You print two trillion today, the value doesn't increase two trillion. The numbers of currencies trying to divide it, this constant value increased. That means you have the same denominator, but a larger denominator. That means your average dollars buy less value. When your dollar buys less value, that's called inflation. U.S. Being a global financial dominator, it is able to export its problem to the rest of the world. So everybody in the rest of the world who owns U.S. dollars is paying to get your rich people richer. Don't believe that every politicians are dumb. Some of them are actually smart. They will know that. One day, know that they realize that their country's reserve currency is being diluted by your U.S. government's printing of money and giving it to the rich in the U.S., but not to them. So, they will start doing something. They will start offloading 
their US dollars and US government loans. This offloading will go back to US. That means you has a larger base to divide a finite value. That means inflation. You are going to have inflation when bought everybody else trying to offload their US dollars and US government loans. That inflation, you, you can maintain it as a few percent, good luck. But it will go out of hand very easily when people no longer trust your government is able to pay back its debts. And there's no sign your government has prepared to pay back any debts it has occurred over the past 40 years. So, if I am the financial minister of my country, I will follow Putin's lead to offload my US dollars and US government loans from my reserve. What is changed to? I don't know. But obviously not US dollars. I will offload it to something with a little bit more confidence. Then the coming collapse really comes when the government staff start offloading their reserve and change to hold the, the US part, US dollar part to some other currency that may not come tomorrow, not next week, maybe not this year, but the process has started because of the poor performance of your government, we, the rest of the world, can see how stupid your government is. And we don't trust your government is able to hold up to what it promised. No, we don't trust it. So we will take care of ourselves by protecting ourselves. One way to do that is to offload US dollars as my reserve. When that happens, your main pillar, your fourth strength, the financial strength, will shrink. Without finance, without the ability to print to get what you want, your military will run off money because it is a big back hole for money. It is spending so much money that it is ridiculous. And that is a big back hole. When you can print to get what you want, that isn't a, ma a problem. But when you can't, that will be a problem. So your second strength will collapse as well. When your second and third string collapse, smart people go to places where they can make money. Why stay in the United States when there are many other places in the world which they can make more money? So your smart people also left. When they leave, left behind are those very dumb Americans who doesn't know where is China, where is Europe on the map. They can't even point where is China on the map. They, target, they can't even do a simple division. There are plenty of examples that you can look for online to see how dumb your fellow Americans has become. They don't know about world history. They don't know about economy. They listen to your thick news day in, day out and believe every single word coming from these liars. What can you expect? First world country suddenly becomes the third or maybe fourth world country. Your dollar loss is value. 
your superannuations no longer protect you. You do not have a job. Nobody is willing to invest in United States. And your rich people with all their money will find somewhere else better to live. You will be left as a torn up, no future country. But that is not the worst part. The worst part is that you people have too many guns among yourselves. When people find that their supermarket shelves are getting empty very quickly, they will start looting. They will start killing each other. The blood bath will be horrible because never in history and not anywhere in the world had this amount of assault weapons in the hand of your citizens. In the name of protecting your family, you will shoot anyone getting close to your door. So will others. So you cannot depend on each other for help. The peppers are prepared to last six months, a year, but this crisis will last for decades. Their stock, their stockpile won't last that long. Sometime you guys have to come together and work together. How that will change? Take a look at Cuba in the 60s. Learn it. Learn it now before it's too late. And you want to avoid this? You may start to think, What's wrong is with your government structure. Is election really able to help you to solve this problem? How will your government change if you change the way you elect your government officials? Think about that. Hope that you will find an answer. I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you. This is a search you have to do yourself. Bye-bye.